see trees of I have Gracie Terzin here with me. She's a very good fan, amazing singer, writer, ukulele player, YouTubist. YouTuber. YouTuber, YouTubist. <laughs> Hard to say. And what we're gonna do right now is taking this beautiful song, Wonderful World, and doing four levels of harmonic content. We'll use really, really cool shapes and chords, but also devices that you can apply to a lot of songs. So we're gonna kind of play the three other options that are really interesting and then we'll talk about them, break them down and show you exactly what's happening. Oh, by the way guys, if you're enjoying these chords, uh, Rotom has just put out a awesome chord workshop, very informative, very in-depth. You get a big discount with the link down below. Also there. I see trees of green Red roses too I see them Skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day in the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I hear. Basically, um, I came with a concept of saying I'm gonna add some harmonic information in each level. We started with just try. So the first level we did was literally one three five. The second one was one three five seven. So seven chords, mainly shell chords. The third one we started adding extension, and in the last last one I added extension as well as some reharm ideas. So let's dive in. Level one. Triads. Indeed. And within triads, what we're doing is mainly harmonizing the melody with chords that quote unquote fit. Now, a very good indication um, is that a lot of times, again, not always, but the melody, like you can see here, is actually a part of the chord. So when I'm playing this melody, do, 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 so, I see skies are blue. Is that the, those are the lyrics section? I see trees. Yeah, the skies are blue is the second verse. They're blue, yeah. Um, so we have C major and the note the melody starts with C, and then the next note is G. Now, just to harmonize the, the note G, I have a few options within the key of C major, but not all the chords are optional. Again, later on we can do more extension and cool things, but as a kind of starting point, we do want to oftentimes find chords that are within the framework of the melody. So it makes our life easier because there aren't as many options. Now, of course, we also need to keep in mind the song because there are a few options and it could be E minor, it could be G. In this case, the melody goes to E minor. That's kind of the sound of the song. So that's why I chose E minor. And like you can see, I'm really playing like the good old kind of classic chords in this neck of the wood. I see trees of green. Right, and, and I could choose here to go back to E minor, which I did sometimes, or to C because of the melody. The point is in this level is it needs to be very diatonic and very clear, very simple and not trying to, to do too much motion. Let's sing it one more time and I'll kind of talk through as we do it. Cool. I see trees C. of green. E minor is third. Five, six. This is the trick of this song. And I 
A flat, the flat six. And then I just wanted a five, super simple. Three, five of two, please, A major, two, and five, right? So in this case, it's almost painful to not play the cool chords because there's so many beautiful options and then, and then just staying on the G for two bars instead of playing some, some motion is, is like... It's hard. It's hard. But, you know, we need to hear it in a clear way as much as possible. And it's, it's, it's really important to see that framework because a lot of times what happens is that people kind of jump and then, yeah, you know, it's not as clear, I think. Level two. Level two. I see trees of green, red roses too. Same. I see them blue. Five or six. For me seven. And for you. Six minus seven. And I think A flat to seven. myself. Level two, five. What a wonder. Alright, so what we have here again is exactly the same framework, but you see we have a little more motion. And once we introduce these seven chords, there's no reason in the world, and that's what we'll do in the next level, to be not gonna play D minus seven nine or G7 13 and flat thirteen. So this is exactly kind of like the framework that starts really simple by understanding okay, this is C major, this is the one chord in the key of C major, and then therefore I can make it a major seven and maybe even Major seven nine. Level three. Level three. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. Bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonder. So what happened here, we start with a C major 7 to the E minor 7. I played this vo voice in here, the shell chord, but with a top E, a G on the top. But then I just move uh, chromatically to the D minor. Why can I do that? Because I can. <laughs> so basically, um, we need to think kind of where we're going. In this case, I decided to go from the E minor to the D minor. So I just literally kind of like did that and I think I played D minor 7, 9. Then instead of going back to the E minor, I did go, if I remember correctly, to the C major 7 first version. Um, the e, major, e minor 7 and the C major 7 have a lot of notes in common, so sometimes they're interchangeable. It depends on the situation and how it sounds. For me, I, I kind of was hearing that, so I went there. Um, and then after that, I played a 2-5 with the extensions, and then I did another 2-5, instead of the E7, I played somewhat of a 2-5, B half diminished E7 to A minus 7, to basically uh, the 6th degree, and then flat 6, and then I played a few inversions, just the same chord with inversions, why not, because it just sounds nice. Mm -hmm. And then I played a 2-5 with the 9, if I remember correctly, something like that, and I played this kind of voicing. With the G7, uh, I played the 13 flat 9 just because it's kind of like um, intense. There is a lot of friction there. And then at the turnaround, instead of playing 3, 6, 2, 5, I played E7 instead of the E minor because I can. The idea here is kind of asking where we're going. It created a clash, but she quickly resolved it because she's amazing. And then um, basically I played, instead of the E minor, I played E7, which is the 5 of the 6. And then 5 of 2, I did, I did this kind of sequence, I kind of majored these chords instead of a minor, I played this, this thing, and then kind of back home to lead us to the next level. Level 4. Level 4. I see babies cry. Nice. So 
So what I did here is I was thinking about the target point. So the first chord we know is C major, the second chord is E minor. So instead of going and starting with a C major, I was thinking about this target point, E minor, and I was thinking, how can I get there? Well, a good way to get to a chord is using a secondary dominant. So in that case, I use the B7, but not only the B7, but I use also F sharp, uh, half diminished B7. So basically making this little cell of two, five, one leading to this E minor. And although it's really quick, I also knew the melody. So I knew it's gonna work because the note C is in within the, uh, within um, uh, the chord F sharp minus nine five five F half diminished, and on the B seven it's actually the flat nine, so it's really really cool. And this is something we can always do. Again, what I care about in in these kind of videos and um, conversations that we have is that we understand the mechanisms, right? It's not really like taking this song, but it's understanding that, okay, we're in the key of C and we have a target chord, E minor, so we can target that using a secondary dominant and then doing a two five to that secondary dominant. And that's a rule of thumb you can always do. You can basically ask yourself where you're going and add chords in that direction. And then you can basically reharmonize kind of local kind of small movements. Mm. Um, after that, I played um, the E minor seven. Then I actually played E flat seven nine for a second. So instead of doing the passing chord, the same chord, I just did just to kind of change it up a little bit. So basically, again, I was thinking about the target chord as D minor. So instead of doing like a two five or chromatic thing, I just did a E flat seven, which is for me a chart of substitution. Um, from A7. Um, again, it's like a little chromatic, but it sounds really nice. Very quick. Also something you can always do. And then D minor 7, 9, G7. Um, I believe I played also again the C major 7 first inversion. Again, 2, 5. And then I went to this um, B uh, diminish, and I, I think I played like a little inversion of that, which is basically the same thing as playing an E7. And then went to the 6 chord, flat six, the same thing, some inversions, really the same thing. The D minor did a couple inversions with extensions and then then resolved to the one chord with this voicing that I really like on guitar. And from that, I think I just played the four minor for a second, which is a really nice kind of like moment to, to it's your close. your favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite. It was a little clashy with the melody there, but she, hold it, she held it like tight, so, so it was, so it was still working because a lot of times it could be like kind of tricky. Thanks so much for hanging. Thank you, Gracie, for my pleasure singing and hanging out. Check out her YouTube channel; it's beautiful, and also she has a lot of music. And we also make a lot of music together, so yeah. you can check that out. I'll put some links so you can listen. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. I see trees of green, red roses too. So pretty in the sky